Hey there, look what I've got. Purple color comes from red cabbage, but this is a, ooh, about a half gallon of homemade sauerkraut. And the topic of today's Ask Wardy is, does sauerkraut or other fermented cruciferous veggies hurt your thyroid? It's a great question that came in from Angel today and we're gonna tackle it in a moment. First, let me welcome you to Ask Wardy. This is the weekly show where I, Wardy, answer your questions about traditional cooking. Now, a little bit about me. I'm the author of The Complete Idiot's Guide to Fermenting Foods, and I'm the lead teacher and owner of Traditional Cooking School by Ganalflins. And this is where we gather every Wednesday to tackle your questions about traditional cooking. You will find complete notes for this episode and any others from the past or in the future when they come out at askwardy.tv. So you can follow along right now even. Um, it's all there waiting for you, askwardy.tv for what I'm gonna share today, as well as um, any links. If you're on Facebook Live, my daughter Hania is right there in the comments. Hi Hania. And she is gonna be posting links and answering your questions as we go. Um, and welcome to those of you who are on Facebook. Uh, no matter where you're checking this out, if it's in your earbuds or on YouTube or at the show notes, askwardy.tv, welcome. So I'm so glad you're here. And I welcome you to subscribe, subscribe and share this episode of Ask Wardy and come back again in the future. All right, so let's get into today's topic. Do fermented cruciferous vegetables like sauerkraut hurt the thyroid? Does fermenting reduce goitrogens would be a related question. Now, let me explain all that to you. So here's the thing. Many people recognize that cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, that they contain goitrogens. And goitrogens, at the least, will um, reduce your iodine levels or reduce your body's sorry, increase your body's need for iodine because there's a negative effect on the iodine in your body, or at the worst, goitrogens can damage your thyroid. So this is a really important question. And we know that if you cook uh, cruciferous vegetables, like the ones I just mentioned, that goitrogens are reduced. But Angel's question today is what about fermenting cruciferous vegetables like cabbage, making sauerkraut, does that reduce goitrogens? That's a great question, Angel. I'm gonna cover it in a moment. Um, and I also wanna point out that, what if the answer is no? If the answer is no, that it doesn't reduce goitrogens, should you stop eating sauerkraut in order to protect your thyroid? So we're gonna cover um, a bunch of questions today related to this topic. So let me read you Angel's exact question. She says, for someone with thyroid issues, does fermenting goitrogenic foods change the harmful properties so they don't have a negative effect? I love the effects of fermented foods, don't we all? Probiotics, enzymes, beneficial acids. Uh, but as spring and summer are coming, I wanna be wise with the foods I ferment. If broccoli, kohlrabi, cauliflower, etc., are still harmful for my thyroid even after fermenting them, then I will just freeze them. So Angel, let's tackle this question. And first, I wanna say two things. One is, I'm not a doctor, okay? I'm not a healthcare practitioner. And so what I'm gonna do today is share uh, the research that I've compiled for you into a simple, pretty simple answer. But you, Angel, and anyone else listening, um, I'm not taking the role of giving you medical advice and you are responsible for your own healthcare decisions and you would wanna consult with a healthcare practitioner um, about the specifics of your health regimen, okay? But what I am gonna do is give you some information so that you can make an informed decision confidently, I hope, or consult with a healthcare practitioner for more advice about your particular situation. Second, Angel, <laughs> you have opened a can of worms. And I mean that seriously and lovingly. Uh, there's a lot of controversy on this topic. There are people that say that cooking reduces goitrogens and fermenting reduces goitrogens and others that say fermenting doesn't and people that say don't eat them and people that say you can. And so there's a whole bunch of information out there. It's kind of controversial. And I myself have not been in the lab to test anything. I have, do not have a thyroid issue that I know of. Um, so what I'm gonna be relating is information from sources I trust, which I invite you to test and measure and evaluate yourself use your own common sense, consult your healthcare practitioner to make an informed decision. 
The best that I can do is to explain these issues to you so that you can make an informed decision with confidence. All right, so let's get into it. The goitrogen issue. And I'm going to read here a quote from Chris Masterjohn. He's going to, he, this is to tell you what the issue with goitrogens is. When raw crucifers are chewed, or when microwaved and steamed crucifers are digested by intestinal bacteria, they release substances called goitrogens that increase the need for iodine when consumed in small amounts and can damage the thyroid gland when consumed in large amounts. These goitrogens also inhibit the transfer of iodine into mother's milk. So, summarizing all that, if someone is deficient in iodine, has thyroid issues, or is breastfeeding, then paying attention to goitrogens is a really good idea. And Angel, that is definitely you. Uh, so reducing goitrogens or excess goitrogens would seem to be a good idea, right? So now let's talk about that, which is, well, how do you uh, reduce goitrogens? As far as I can tell, cooking is the only reliable way to reduce goitrogens. So we're talking about steaming or boiling. Here's what Chris Masterjohn says. Steaming crucifers until they're fully cooked reduces the goitrogens to one third the original value on average. Since release of the goitrogens from steamed crucifers depends on intestinal bacteria, however, the amount released varies from person to person. I am seeing uh, smiley faces and reactions on Facebook Live. Thank you so much, those of you who are participating uh, with that live interaction and feedback. It lifts me up. He also says, boiling crucifers for 30 minutes reliably destroys 90% of the goitrogens. Wow, that's significant. So he's talking about boiling and steaming here. And correlated to that, the fermenting question, which is really Angel's basic question. Does fermenting do that? Sadly, it does not reduce goitrogens. Fermentation does not neutralize goitrogens in crucifers. Sorry. But hang on, there is some good news because Chris Masterjohn, who I'm quoting here, goes on to say, when foods like sauerkraut are consumed as condiments, however, the small amount of goitrogens within them is not harmful if one's diet is adequate in iodine. So that's the good news. While goitrogens may be harmful in large quantities, if your diet is sufficient in iodine, then fermented cruciferous vegetables are fine to eat in smaller amounts like condiments. And I wanna do a quick shout out here to John. I sent out an email telling you all that I was about to broadcast Ask Wardy and traditional cooking school member John replied almost immediately to that email and he said, well, it's just common sense that anytime you eat anything or do anything in excess, it can have harmful effects. Why should food be any different? And amen to that, John. And especially in the situation where one might have um, a deficiency in iodine or thyroid issues, that if you go to excess with any food, including sauerkraut, it could be harmful to you. So Angel, what I'm gonna do is encourage you, and again, this isn't medical advice, it's just I think the conclusion you can draw from this research is to investigate your iodine levels. You might already know them. It's really important to know that in order for you to make a decision about whether or not you can consume sauerkraut or other fermented crucifers. And I also want to point out that too much iodine can be a problem as well. And Hania is posting links, or you can look below this video for links to that information. Um, I want to wrap up this discussion to let you hear from others in the um, internet world. And I specifically chose three that I felt are really good researchers and or um, have, you know, well, their, 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 their stuff is solid, okay? So I've been quoting from Chris Masterjohn, who was a PhD researcher, but here are some links from others who have particular reasons to investigate this issue, like you, Angel, or anyone else listening here today, um, and have investigated for it for the sake of their thyroid or other conditions where goitrogens may be an, may be an issue, and they've decided to go ahead and consume uh, goitrogenic foods whether raw, cooked, or fermented, they've decided to. So below this video, you'll see a link uh, to an article from Katie at Wellness Mama. She does not have an iodine deficiency. In fact, it sounds like from her article that she had too much iodine, and she chooses to eat these greens in moderation. 
Sarah from Nourished and Nurtured suggests adding iodine-rich seaweed to her homemade sauerkraut, which I think is a brilliant idea. So you're making your sauerkraut and one of the ingredients you're using is seaweed that has iodine. And that's one way to ensure that you're, if goitrogens are reducing your iodine um, levels in your body, that you are supplying that iodine when you eat your sauerkraut. Um, and finally, Mickey from Autoimmune Wellness. Um, so her issue is um, autoimmune conditions. So she's following the autoimmune protocol and teaches others about it and talks about goitrogenic foods being fine in moderation, as long as they're autoimmune protocol approved. So those links again are below this video. Now I want to wrap up um, telling you all or giving you all an invitation to an online event that's coming soon about the thyroid. Now let me back up a bit to tell you the reason why this is so important. There are an estimated 20 million people walking around with thyroid, thyroid conditions that cause weight gain, hair loss, brain fog, and more, and they have no idea there's a problem. And because of this huge problem, undiagnosed thyroid conditions, undiagnosed thyroid disease, people who are just underperforming and going on with life and thinking that's normal. Um, there, th I have an online colleague, a friend, Isabella Wentz, who's a pharmacist and herself went years with undiagnosed thyroid um, conditions, finally got an, finally came up with answers herself and came up with natural ways to reverse her thyroid disease. She has put together an online docu-series. It's completely free. It's called The Thyroid Secret because it really is a secret that uh, so many people have undiagnosed thyroid disease, thyroid conditions, and that there is hope and there are natural ways to recover, not just pharmaceuticals. And so this free online docu-series happens in March and I highly encourage you all to get registered for it. Go right now to tradcookschool.com slash secret, or there's a link below this video, and register, reserve your seat. It happens in March, it's completely free. It's gonna happen over the course of many days where certain parts of the docu-series, like a documentary, but in a series, so day, every day a new part will be uh, released. Um, I myself am planning to tune in every single day. There are family members, my family members, who have thyroid issues. Um, I know all too well, maybe not thyroid, but how it is to have hormone issues. And we really wanna to get to the bottom of those. So if you, your loved ones, have known or undiagnosed even thyroid issues or thyroid conditions, you really, really wanna get registered, tradcookschool.com slash secret. It's completely free. There's gonna be so much information explaining the problem and the solutions and give you hope uh, that you or your loved ones can feel normal and have a normal life again. It's a huge issue and I'm so glad that Isabella is tackling it. Really, really glad about that. Again, the link is tradcookschool.com slash secret, and it is below this video, so you can click over. Okay, so let's do a wrap up here. Um, I've gone through the goitrogen issue, and Angel, I've given you my recommendations. So check into your iodine levels and see whether they warrant that uh, moderate quantities of fermented crucifers like sauerkraut are allowable in your diet. I hope this gives you hope Use your spring and summer bounty for fermented foods if that can work for you. Um, also at askwardy.tv, I've included some additional links for you, Angel, or anyone, not just to register for the thyroid secret, but we have some um, really powerful articles on thyroid health. One of them is seven foods that nourish your thyroid. Look below this video for a link. Another is seven foods that harm your thyroid or make your thyroid sick, as um, author Lindsay puts it. And finally, um, MCT oils. If you're unfamiliar with MCTs or you wanna brush up on them, um, it's a form of coconut oil that can help uh, reduce belly fat and also increase energy. So the implications of that for thyroid are huge because with thyroid um, issues, you know that uh, weight gain is an issue and low energy is an issue. So MCT oils can help combat that. So we have an in-depth um, article there on MCT oils and look below this video for a link to that. Thanks everyone so much for joining me. I'm so glad you made it for Ask Wardy. I hope you come back next week, same time, same place. Uh, but if you miss it and can't make it live, that's okay because all the recordings and all the notes and all the links are always available for you at askwardy.tv. 
I'll talk to you again soon. God bless and bye-bye.